to this same podium and deliver to you all the same methodical opening. Speech after speech after speech after speech. Right? Well, since you are all so well familiar with it, please join me in introducing myself. Yeah. Hello, my name is Charles Berry and I'm from Spanaway, Washington. <laughs> Well, the reason why this specific introduction is so significant to me is due to the simple fact that it welcomes in the shy, the insignificant, the left out, the forgotten one, and metaphorically speaking, the small towner like myself. And just to add on to that is I think that when folks are familiar with Spanaway and its humble settings, it brings a small <laughs> smile to their face. Am I correct? Word. <laughs> Excerpts are defined in the dictionary as to take or select passages from a book, a film, or a bridge by choosing representative sections. And that's what I will be doing today in presenting my portfolio. I'll first be talking about my outlines. And being specific, it'll be number three, which was our past speeches. Second, I'll be talking about my makeup speech where I went to Spring Ridge and experienced singing along with a wonderful group of people. Third, I'll be sharing an excerpt from a story I wrote called Neighbors for Breakfast. And I'll be concluding with what I learned this quarter. You guys all remember the outlines. The first one, who was significant, mine was Bill Cosby and how it shaped me, right? Mm -hmm. Wonderful speech, I think. <laughs> <laughs> My second speech was a demonstration speech, and I demonstrated to you all how to relieve stress. Remember the earth stress relief balls? Yeah. Still have it. Still have it. Does anybody remember the phrase that I quoted? The world, in your hand. the world is literally in the palm of your hand when dealing with stress. I like to bring out my more favorites of the outlines and speeches, which was the one that you guys didn't actually get to hear the end of. My third speech, which was my critique on three past speeches. I like to talk about what I spoke about in the speech, which was leadership in times of adversity. In St. Crispian's day from Shakespeare's Henry V, no one else would take leadership in the situation. So Henry V spoke to his fellow men, those who wanted to fight and those who wanted to leave were spoken justly to. In Sojourner's Truth, Ain't I a Woman, Sojourner made this speech to a women's group to inspire and strengthen. At this time, women didn't have any rights to vote, any rights to work, or pretty much anything else that they have the rights to do now. But at this time, it was fight for your rights. <clears throat> I like to share my makeup 
experience at Spring Ridge with you guys. I won't read the whole thing. I'll just take a excerpt from it. Saturday, March 5th, 2011, 1.45 p.m. I just showed up to the Spring Ridge Senior Citizen Home on Portland Avenue on the east side of Tacoma, and I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like singing from my soul to these senior citizens. I stepped inside immediately and noticed in the small room to my left the 30 or so people singing joyfully about a man named Bobby and his experiences. I gathered myself upon introduction and Jeff, a public speaking classmate of mine, assisted me as to where I could obtain the lyrics to songs later mentioned. After singing joyfully about a man named Bobby and his experiences, we took a second to acknowledge each other and introduce ourselves on a first name basis. As the names were sounded off like Army Platoon's morning roll call, Brooke, Wayne, Joe. I spotted in the corner, sandwiching a little old woman, Asa and Isaiah. <laughs> I gave them a friendly head nod as the reminder of names slowly came to a halt. As the remainder of names slowly came to a halt. As we sung rhythmic folk songs to the instruments of acoustic guitars, bongos, and a harmonica, oh yeah, and maracas, I joined in as well, playing the orange. When I was handed the fruit, I said, thank you. I really like oranges. And the thought of biting into one just before harmonizing soulful melodies brought the biggest smile on my face. But upon receiving the citrus delight, I felt that the weight of the orange was substantively, substantively, substantively lighter than I had been accustomed to. Thus, Upon receiving the orange, I shook it, only to find out that its contents consisted of beads used to simulate the sound of maracas. <laughs> Disappointed, I wouldn't be enjoying the citrus of a sun-kissed orange, I quickly made the best of it. You could say that I turned oranges into orange juice. We began singing, and quickly I realized that my rattlesnake-like shake and rustle was all that was keeping these senior citizens and their guests in rhythm. Thus, <laughs> thus I held it my duty to single-handedly keep the group marching to the beat of one drum. Asa later went on to say, man, Charles, you are jamming, <laughs> on which my response was to him, it's what I do. 